Hello there, my name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares and in a previous video I took the Super Famicom controller and used it as inspiration to create four unique character designs uh, with each character kind of pulling from different parts of the controller. And so for this video I wanted to do like a bit of a sequel except using the Super Nintendo controller um, which is kind of the same but different. And rather than doing multiple characters I just kind of want to do one single character and sort of throw everything from the controller at that one design. So let's get going and see what we can do. So as I mentioned, rather than meticulously assigning each part of the controller to different characters or design elements, for this one I want to create a single character that contains as many references to this hardware as possible. And for me, the western redesign of the Super Nintendo, as opposed to the original Super Famicom, really feels like it's trying to be cooler and more high tech with that boxy look of the console and the grey and purple color scheme. So the way I'd like to go about this character design is by creating some kind of piloted robotic mech suit or exoskeleton type of thing since it can be modular and technical, and it's kind of a cool thing to design that I feel would suit the aesthetic of the Super Nintendo. I really like mech designs that are kind of suits on a similar scale to the operator, rather than being like these colossal robots, although those are definitely cool as well. Um, so the smaller size is kind of the direction I want to go with this one. To save time and plan out where I was headed, I began by sketching out a few rough concepts. It's also a good excuse just to break out the old markers and have a bit of fun that way. I really like this idea of doing a pilot in like a two-tone purple jumpsuit and then the mech suit itself would represent the rest of the controller with different buttons and abilities and the whole thing would be sort of in this metallic grey finish. I started by pixeling the pilot and I chose a sprite size of 40 pixels tall which is a comfortable sizing for me and it's also kind of the sizing I used in the Super Famicom design video so I just wanted to make sure that these characters were all compatible within the same world. I dropped in some simple shapes to indicate the position of the head, the pelvis, and the feet, and then began connecting together the line work of the legs. Because I had done that rough sketch before this, I was basically just recreating the lines that I made for that pose. What's tricky in this sizing though is finding the balance um, to the curvature of the leg shape. Like really it's only a difference of one or two pixels worth of depth to differentiate between a thigh and a calf muscle kind of shape. I created a large triangular shape for her upper body because I wanted to have these prominent angular shoulder pads and then kind of have a relatively plain suit with just a small section of ribbed sort of texture for the abdomen. Just kind of something simple and tactical. For mental references I was kind of pinning it somewhere between Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell and Officer Lewis from Robocop. I continued creating the pose just from really simple stick figure construction and then just continuing to add pixels to thicken up the shapes. When making arms, something I find that can help is just placing down a circle shape for the hand and then sort of working backwards from there towards the body. This approach can also help plan out where to leave negative space in the character silhouette, like if you don't want limbs overlapping other areas for example. From here I added in a really basic placeholder face just for now. Um, she looks angry because I envisioned her being just a bit of a villain character. You know my Super Famicom characters were all these like good guy heroes, so I just gotta balance it out. I also really like the idea of that jagged zigzag ponytail hairstyle, uh, which I think kind of works well just to have like a villainous caricature sort of thing going on. I do end up giving her a helmet later on, so I'm not really sure how the ponytail works and all that, but it's just sort of a stylized cartoony thing anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. As usual, I shaded the entire thing in grayscale first just to find those blocks of light and dark areas across the costume design. And more importantly, I didn't want to decide on any colors until I had the mech design sorted out. And I've got kind of a unique idea for finding the colors for this one, so I'll share that in a bit. For now, let's move on to the mech construction, which again, I did another page of rough sketches, just iterating and trying to find a cool design. And I settled on this look which is appropriately inspired by Samus from Super Metroid. Except rather than it being a fitted suit, it's kind of a larger exoskeleton idea. So the legs and arms are extensions past her own, kind of like being on stilts I guess. I really liked how that sketch came out, so rather than redoing that work from scratch in pixel work, um, I just took a photo of the sketch and copy pasted it into my pixel art document and then scaled it down into the range of my pixel art by using the already completed pilot sprite as a size reference. From here it was just about tracing my own hand drawn work, um, but at a drastically lower resolution. I've done this kind of thing before for my sketches and normally I don't actually prefer working this way because I find I usually end up with really messy pixel art that requires a lot of cleaning up, but for this one with how much I like the rough sketch I felt like it was worth it. This is one of those times where it felt like having a drawing tablet would actually be very beneficial for pulling off a design like this. I don't know if it would have worked out to rough sketch the concept in pixel resolution first, but I could always start in like high res and then at least it'd be easier to resize a digital sketch rather than having to take a photo of it with my phone. But yeah, after that rough tracing, uh, I do lapse around the design and refine a lot of that line work, just adding or deleting pixels as necessary to get rid of jagged looking lines. 
and also keeping an eye on areas that I want to fill with inspiration from the Super Nintendo controller. I think my favorite thing was taking the L and R triggers and making them into shoulder pads for the mech suit. And I've got what's supposed to be like two controller cords plugging into the helmet to kind of establish an interface with the mech. The D-pad and the start and select buttons also appear as a bit of technical decoration on the upper arms of the suit. For the shading, I just used that grayscale palette again, um, which by the way is just five shades. Uh, there's a black, a white, and three gray tones. For my kind of style, I find this is often enough for me to define the light and dark areas to my liking, and it keeps it restricted enough to create a really stylized look. Alright, you know what, let's just jump ahead and reveal the finalized design, and then I'll come back after that to talk about some more design elements and coloring for this thing. Okay, so here's a look at what I'm calling the SNES, which stands for the Super Nintendo Exosuit. Here we go! Alright, so as you can see, this ended up being kind of a small character sheet just from some of the work I've done within this concept. The little pixel controller is something I already had made actually, so I just included it here because it serves as a quick point of comparison to see some of the inspired features in the design. The ABXY buttons I used to inspire this sort of double kneecap kind of look. Um, the suit is sort of placing her on stilts anyway, so it felt like it was a good way to work in the idea of that extra extended height. Although it's probably more form over function at this point. And even though this was mainly meant to be inspired by the controller, I kind of couldn't resist having her blaster cannon resemble the super scope piece of periphery. And I even dropped a few references to the console itself, like the purple rectangle sliders for the power and reset, and the glowing red light when it's powered up. As for the color, I tried something new I've never done before. Since the whole thing was inspired by the Super Nintendo controller, I just took a picture of that controller and then used the color picker tool to grab colors from that photo. I figured that way at least it'd be a pretty close match to the real thing. Of course, colors are very contextual, so even something from a photo isn't necessarily going to translate well for use in pixel art. So I did have to massage them into place a little bit and find a nice representation of that color palette suitable for pixel art. It was a fun and different way to approach color though, and just to get something on the board to work with. And I really like that it ties the design even further with the thing that inspired it. Alright, I hope you enjoyed watching the concept to completion for this one. Um, now that I've done a couple of these controller concept pieces, it's kind of got me thinking about continuing making it a series or something. Like I think the Sega Saturn would make a really neat one, um, and actually the N64 controller would be really cool to work with too. If you happen to have your own favorite controller, feel free to leave it in the comments and we'll see what we can come up with. So thank you for watching and take care and keep it square.